Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Burst TV. My name is Charlotte. I'm a registered dental hygienist and the host here with a special interview. Today, we're going to talk about laser light therapy, um, also known as photobiomodulation using cold lasers. So if you've heard of it, give me a quick thumbs up. And if not, hit the subscribe button and stay right there. I've got a very special guest for us. All right, today we have Miss Annette Quinn on Burst TV. She is an oncology nurse. She's a program director at the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Center. She is a super, super smart lady with a very extensive background. And um, I do not want to spend a ton of time doing that whole, hi, let's get to know you and, and your whole history. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make sure that people have resources so that the, you can, they can watch your interviews and watch some of the things that you've been involved with. Perfect. Um, but today as a dental professional and that, uh, you know, we have quite a wide variety of people that are going to watch Burst TV, but most of us are dental professionals. And so um, when I saw an interview with you, I recognized the Thor laser. Yes. Or cold laser. Right. And, you know, I, to treat patients that are suffering with the many, many uncomfortable side effects that come along with cancer treatment. Yes. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind and, and many of uh, the other dental professionals that are watching this, um, they would think mucositis. Correct. One of the common one. So I recognize the Thor. I instantly knew I needed to talk to you about this. Um, um, so on behalf of the crew of everybody here at Burst, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Sure, thank you, Charlotte, for having me. And I know you're busy ladies, so I, I've already previously promised you that I'm not going to ramble too much because I, okay. um, <laughs> I think one of the best ways to help people understand the benefits of something like this that might be new to them mm -hmm. um, is to talk to a caregiver and get your perspective, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you've got a lot of experience using this. You're probably coming up on 30 years. Oh, well, 30 years dealing with oral mucositis, but we've had our Thor laser since only since 2013. We have treated, we're probably up to about, oh, over a thousand patients that we've treated with the Thor laser. Now, with a patient in the chair, as yeah. a caregiver, how do you explain to them how this treatment works? How does a cold laser work? Oh, it, good, very good question because you know, it's funny when we first got the laser and um, we had had a patient, typically with our head and neck cancer patients, we tell them by treatment 13, you're going to be pretty miserable. Yeah. And we had a patient that was on treatment 21, 22, and still no oral mucositis. And we're like, okay, what are you doing? And he said, my daughter is a dentist and she's been shining this magic red light in my mouth. And we were like, Oh, so we started doing research and we were like, that's how you heard about it. That is how we heard about it. Right. Yeah. The magic red light. Um, and then we found that there's all this great peer reviewed literature out of Brazil and the UK. So, you know, we immediately wrote a grant and we got it. So, but you know, you do, you're just, you're shining light and, you know, you're thinking that, okay, this is going to, to work. Um, so then you're telling patients, yeah, absolutely no side effects. You won't notice anything. You won't feel anything. It's not going to get hot. Um, it's just light. And they go, hmm, and they're skeptical. So what we tell patients is we know that light affects the body. We put babies under, um, you know, blue light to help with jaundice. We know that when we're outside. Billy ribbon light, right? Correct. Right. Billy ribbon, right. We know that when we're outside in the sun, that our skin changes colors. We know that light affects the body. Same thing, we have found that light in the red near infrared range helps to decrease tissue inflammation and helps to accelerate healing. And so this light that we're shining in there will work on part of the cell. We call it the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. And what it does is it helps to produce energy to help to decrease inflammation and to speed up healing. I love that. I, that, that is probably one of the few, few things when I was drawing pictures in grade school uh -huh. of, of cells, the mitochondria was always my favorite. That's oh, the mighty mitochondria. Right. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, uh, besides mucositis, what, what are like, let's say top five common, um, treatment options or things that you're treating for patients? Right. So we do oral mucositis is definitely number one. And that's where most of the peer reviewed literature lies. Um, you have to realize I'm in a major university setting. So it's all about peer reviewed literature. 
And we have done patients with burning tongue syndrome, which it works very well. We see patients with graft versus host disease. So in our stem cell transplant patients, our leukemics, our lymphoma patients um, who develop graft versus host disease, we have treated graft versus host. Um, we do a lot of aphthous ulcers. So oncology treatment is really changing, right? There's a whole new paradigm. We're, we're moving away from cytotoxic chemotherapy to more targeted therapy, um, attacking the immune system, building up the immune system. Um, so we found that these targeted therapies don't cause this confluent oral mucositis we typically see from chemotherapy, but cause very large aphthous ulcers that become incredibly painful. I had a guy not too long ago, it was about a quarter size on both sides of his cheeks, and he was only 33, and he wanted to stop treatment. He said, I'm done. I, it's so painful. And you, know, you take a 33-year-old guy, big guy, and he wanted to quit treatment. Um, because of aphthous ulcers. So we do treat a lot of aphthous ulcers and then we do skin reactions is probably our top five. So head and neck cancer patients get, get bad skin reactions from the radiation. So um, we will tend to try to use it to help minimize the skin reactions. And how long does each treatment take? Not very long at all. So a total of about six minutes. So we do, uh, Thor has developed for us a very large LED cluster um, that will cover both cheeks. So we do both cheeks extra orally. We have them stick out their tongue, coat their whole tongue, and then we target their soft palate with an intraoral laser. So about five, six minutes total for treatment. It's one minute for each site. Now, if they develop an, an ulcer or mucositis in areas that we're not treating prophylactically, we will go ahead and target those areas. Patients with head and neck well, cancer. That stay have, ahead of it. You don't need to wait until right. they've got these really aggressive lesions. Exactly. Okay. And it's been great for prophylactic treatment. Like, you know, that's where we've seen a ton of benefit is patients really do well. We see a, a significant decrease in oral mucositis with these patients. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, it's so uh, nice. So, so, so nice. we, we actually, this is how I recognize it. The practice that I worked at for quite a while, my boss was, he just loved the gadgets. He loved all that kind of stuff. So I think initially he probably got a Thor to treat his arthritis and oh, right. uh, some, some jaw issues. And we yep. did, we did treat patients in the dental practice, but the, but the issue for most private practices, especially is going to be reimbursement. You know, oh. if you depend on insurance, these are medical codes usually that we, we might not get reimbursement for. Absolutely. Um, and so I think that would definitely prevent some practices for investing the money um, because it can't be pretty expensive and you've, you know, oh, yeah. you've, you've got to pay for your technology. Absolutely. So for those watching, if you're a dental professional and you're screening patients, you know, they're going to be going in um, for cancer treatment or they're in the middle of it and they're already having symptoms. What, what can we do on a local level to help find places that offer the cold laser therapy? Oh, that's great. It's so funny. It's, it's the opposite. Us cancer centers are looking for local dentists who have the technology. I, um, you know, we were probably one of the first in the States to really start using it and bringing the technology to the forefront. I get calls from patients all over the world right now, like who will call me and say, you know, I have oral mucositis, what can I do? And my first thing is, okay, let me reach out to a cancer center close to you to see if they have it available. And if not, I'm going to have you talk to your local dentist because most of them have lasers and maybe it's not a Thor laser and maybe it's not a cold laser, but it's certainly a type of laser that they may be able to power down yeah. to be able to treat the oral mucositis. So, you know, whenever I'm out doing lectures or talking about it, I love to get all the cards of all the dentists, the dental hygienists in the area, because I get calls from patients constantly. And then that way I say, oh, I met a dental hygienist in your area, call them, they'll, you know. So it's really the opposite. Now, if you're stuck and you have a patient and, you know, they're, you know, and you'll see this, you have had a neck cancer patients that could be, you know, a year out from treatment and that may still have some oral mucositis issues. The best thing to do would probably be, you know, reach out to your local radiation cancer center and radiation oncology. There are very few units in the United States still. And your biggest reason is I, reimbursement. I, I encourage all dental professionals to work closely with your local cancer centers. We here at um, University of Pittsburgh Cancer Center, you know, we have close contact with our dentists. We have a dietitian on site. And I will tell you, I would love to have 
a dentist come in once a week, see all of our head and neck cancer patients. I mean, really developing a close relationship with your oncology center is paramount in today's world, oncology world. Like, you know, really reaching out and, and creating those relationships so that when we have patients with, you know, xerostomia, dry mouth, and, you know, they're going to have that forever. They're really going to need to rely on their dentist. So when you have that relationship with your oncologist and you know what kind of treatment this patient's had and what they're gone through, you know, you're going to develop obviously a better care plan for the patient. Yeah. So yeah. You know, yeah. And that's, and that's what we're getting at. And this is what makes mm -hmm. me very excited about this is right. You know, really tapping into the interdisciplinary care yep. options that we have have, um, there is an organization, I'm going to give them a shout out. It's going to be, the, it's the National Network of Healthcare Hygienists. Great. They are coming up with some protocols and strategies to get them into hospital settings so they can be that liaison. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's wonderful. Yep. So yep. I, listen, I, do you have a, do you have like a favorite patient or story that really sticks out in your mind? That you've oh my gosh, I have so many of them. <laughs> I know that would be the hardest question. <laughs> yeah, I think probably one of the the biggest ones that I you know is my most recent patient who um, she had a squamous cell carcinoma of her lip, and we were treating that area, and um, she had horrific oral mucositis. And I have this great picture of her. She was in so much pain, and the tears were just rolling rolling down mm -hmm. her cheek. Um, and we had started the laser. We didn't start it early on because we usually don't like to treat over active sites of disease, mm -hmm. but she was in so much pain and having so many issues. Um, and so we treated her and she, you know, progressively got better within one or two weeks. And she comes in the next time and she's just smiling from ear to ear. And I have this great photo of her with no tears and lipstick on Aww. and just looking wonderful. And so, well, send she, me the picture. I will. I, I, want, I want to make will. sure yes. to get absolutely it. will. That's yes. Amazing. That's what it's yeah. all about. She's amazing. Yeah. Annette, thank you so much. You're Annette. welcome. Anything, anytime. I appreciate it. You Good guys stay, stay tuned for the next um the next segment. I'm gonna do a part two. I actually got a hold of Thor and we're gonna get really nerdy technical into all the things and this photobiomodulation. So stay Good. tuned for that. Um thank you, Annette. Have a wonderful you're welcome. Thank you for everything you're doing. Right. Okay, take care. Bye bye. If your best friend from when you were five years old met your current best friend, how do you think they'd get along? Oh, they'd get along great, except one's a Trump supporter and one's a Biden. So oh, <laughs> that might be the only issue. Yeah, well, maybe you could like be the, the I'm in the middle Switzerland for them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>